Today's video is from the Underworld franchise with a focus on the life of Victor. Along with Celine, Victor is one of the most recognizable characters from the franchise and has played a pivotal role in seeing the vampire race prosper for the best part of 15 centuries. Despite many of today's vampires believing that Victor was the first of their kind, it was certainly not the case. Victor was once a human and was born sometime in or around the 5th century. He was a Hungarian warlord with a vast army and ruled for many years with an iron fist. He was feared as much as he was respected. However, despite his strength, power, ruthlessness and the overall legacy that he forged, Victor's mortality eventually caught up with him. He wasn't too far from death when the actual first of his kind, Vampire Marcus, approached him and promised him the gift of immortality in exchange for his army and military expertise in order to defeat the werewolves, led by his own twin brother, William. Victor accepted and then turned his army immortal, just as he was, creating what's known as the Army of the Death Dealers, with himself, Marcus and Amelia ruling as the Vampire Elders. He then proceeded to launch the Vampire Werewolf War. However, despite Marcus's initial claims about fighting the werewolves, he did not want any harm to come to his twin brother, even though it was William who led them on their current path of destruction. Amelia, at the request of Victor, dealt with William herself and managed to capture the werewolf after some time. Although grateful to Marcus for his immortality, Victor knew that if he had access to his brother, then Marcus would surely release him, which according to Victor, was not a possibility whatsoever. He imprisoned William in an inescapable, impenetrable dungeon, locked away where he could not make any more of his kind. This caused a great strain between Victor and Marcus, and to be certain of William never escaping, Victor separated the two keys that were needed to open the dungeon. One he gave to his daughter Sonia, who wore it as a necklace. The other, well, one could say Victor went way beyond what many would consider a sane decision when he had a bronze frame actually welded to his chest. The frame would then hold the key. His body healed over it and the only way it could ever be accessible was if it was cut from Victor's chest itself. The location of the dungeon was extremely detailed and was hidden so well that it required a map just to locate it that Victor had commissioned. He was so paranoid about the location being discovered that he actually slaughtered the map maker and his family, sparing the maker's daughter, a girl named Celine, who reminded him of his own daughter Sonia. He turned Celine and the two created a very close, meaningful relationship in which Celine looked upon him as a mentor and a father. So let's continue. Victor valued power over anything and with Amelia's support, undercut Marcus at every opportunity. The tensions never resulted in any sort of physical confrontation as Victor was well aware that should Marcus die, then his bloodline will die with him, meaning every vampire in existence, meaning Victor. However, with the three elders being immortal, there was no guarantee to prevent arguments, issues or any further confrontations from arising again. Therefore, the governing system known as the Chain was created by the elders and served three functions. The first, as an ingenious power sharing arrangement among the three elders, avoiding conflict among them by ensuring that only one of them was in command in any given century. Second, to provide each elder with a much needed respite from the demands of eternity. And third, to keep Marcus from ever getting the chance to free his twin brother William. With the two elders in hibernation, Victor began his first reign sometime in the 14th century. Now, it can be argued that his first reign was actually in the 5th century, when Victor and Amelia originally became vampires, but it is shown that all three elders were awake when William was captured in 1202 AD, so it's possible that the chain was created sometime after those events in order to prevent the already 700 years of unspoken, unexpressed tension. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about when Victor's reign started. 
Anyway, the chain was a success and going back to Victor's reign, he successfully domesticated a new breed of werewolf known as the Lycan. The Lycan could transform back to human form unlike its werewolf predecessor and acted as the coven's guards during the vampire's daylight slumber. Vampires are not known to procreate, but it's not entirely unheard of, and Victor did have a daughter, Sonia, with his wife sometime around the year 1210 AD. This is where I find the underworld vampires a little contradicting, and please feel free to correct me in the comments section below. Sonia's mother was Victor's vampire wife and quite a high ranking death dealer, however she died during childbirth, which means she died of injuries or possible blood loss, so I'm immediately questioning why that is if vampires can heal. I mean if we go back to the procedure Victor had done, getting a bronze plate mounted to his ribcage but his wife dies in childbirth, it doesn't really add up quite well in terms of how the vampires heal. Then at what point do these natural born vampires stop aging at? Did Sonia age and then suddenly stop in her mid 20s? There's not a lot of information on how it all works, so if we go back to what I mentioned a few moments ago on Victor's situation with the Lycans. Now not only did he domesticate them, but he actually became quite attached to the Lycan leader Lucian. This all stems back to Lucian's infancy. Disgusted by the fact that this new werewolf breed could actually regain its human form, Victor was moments from executing the newborn Lycan, but could not bring himself to do it, instead choosing to raise him himself and look upon Lucian as a son. This relationship worked extremely well with Lucian showing the utmost loyalty to the vampire coven, even killing what would be considered his own kind in werewolves despite the evolutionary gap between the two species. This arrangement didn't last for long when Lucian fell in love with Victor's vampire daughter Sonia and the two began a secret affair which resulted in Sonia's pregnancy. Sonia believed this child, born of both vampire and lycan, would unite the bloodlines and finally bring an end to the war. However, Victor was completely outraged and furious beyond control. There was no way he would permit such an abomination to be born into the world. It went against everything that represented the vampire race. Despite his love for Sonia, he does not show her any leniency and, with the council, sentences her to death along with Lucian, who is first forced to watch this before his own execution would then follow. Sonia is exposed to the sunlight and turns to ash as Lucian screams in heartbreak and anger. Victor himself is also deeply heartbroken, but knew that the principles and values of the vampire race come before anything else, even family. It's something that stays with him for the remainder of his life, and this is a common trait in Victor's personality. He does have the ability to feel love and create attachment, but nothing will ever come before his value for power and prosperity. However, he wanted none of his past to be available for any of the Coven members to research and even went about altering the vampire archives, inserting his own version of him being the original vampire and then going as far as banishing the Coven historian Andreas Tanish in order to ensure his story had no leaks. Victor then went into hibernation sometime around 1900, with the aim to remain in such a state until the year 2100 as Amelia ruled over the coven. However, he was awakened early, without permission by Celine, as she believed fellow vampire Craven had betrayed the coven and brokered a deal with the Lycan Lucian, who she also believed was still alive. With both claims deemed as absolutely preposterous, Victor dismissed them immediately and commanded that Celine be judged for her disrespectful and unsanctioned actions. No two elders could ever be awake at the same time and Celine had broken centuries of tradition and law. She actually escapes captivity and later returns to prove her claims correct, to which Victor shows great remorse. Victor also interrogates Lycan Singe, who was captured by Celine during her search for proof of Craven's betrayal. However, after learning of Amelia's death at the hands of the Lycans, he strikes Singe so hard that he tears off half his face. 
both Victor and Celine failed to notice Singe's blood spreading across the floor of the resting chamber, which ends up having severe consequences, a topic I'll discuss in a later video. Victor and Celine both go to confront Craven while launching an attack on the Lycan Lair. Craven manages to evade Victor, but Celine eventually confronts him, where he confesses to her that it was Victor who killed her family and also killed his own daughter. When he comes upon Celine, she tearfully confronts him on Craven's accusations, of which he admits were true, but follows up with the protest that he rewarded Celine with immortality in exchange for her parents' debts. He then brushes Celine to one side and throws Michael through a wall into the courtyard as the latter becomes the first hybrid due to Celine's bite. Despite Michael's strength, Victor subdues him due to his better combat experience. Celine kills Victor's bodyguards as they enter the courtyard and is aggressively struck again by Victor. Michael rushes to her aid but is overtaken by the vampire elder who begins to strangle him. Upon seeing this, Celine makes the decision to kill her mentor. She slices his head in half with his own sword, saving Michael and avenging both her family, Lucian and Sonia. That concludes today's video everyone on the life of Victor from the Underworld franchise. Victor as I said is an incredibly recognisable character and I hope you all really enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, please make sure to hit that like video, it has a great effect on the video's overall growth and make sure to comment your opinion down below. If you want to continue this journey with me then please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and have a great day, I'll see you all in the very next video.